craft beer friends, and welcome to Season 8, Episode 20 of Tap to Craft Podcast. I am Denny Lewis coming to you from Boise, Idaho, and my partner in craft, the dog whisperer, and my favorite Florida man from Tampa, Florida, Mr. Chris McKenzie. How do you night, Chris, and what is in your glass? Well, Denny, it is uh, kind of weird recording with you on a Tuesday. Like normally, <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm off during the day, and I can just slowly get into the rest of the day, and then I had to come home and eat dinner fast and get notes done, and but we're here. We're here. Things are good, and in my glass, I am drinking something from your uh, your side of the country. Oh, some Crux Fermentation Project Ribbon of Darkness, nice. which is a barrel aged imperial porter that um, I poured my first my first glass of it and. It's starting to warm up and it's, um, it's becoming very enjoyable. <laughs> well, good. And, and uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be sipping on this for the rest of the episode. But, um, but what about you, sir? How is your day and what's in your glass this evening? Well, uh, we are recording on an off day because uh, that was because of me. And we're late starting on the off day because of me. So yeah, it's my, it's going about that good, about that good. So <laughs> two strikes, don't screw but, it up. <laughs> but you know what? It's it's gotten better already because Chris, you and I are together chatting about beer and drinking beer, and mm-hmm. I am drinking a pay at brewing sofa king dreamy. <laughs> oh, that's it's a good a sofa label. Sofa king. Dreamy. <laughs> that's a good label. <laughs> it's a it's a tropical IPA, and um, this is a really good beer i really enjoy this one and notice i'm drinking this from this year's pints up idaho glass look at all the colors in there blue like and that. pink dark blue magenta kind of colors it's got ufos it's got everything kind of uh you know around uh you know idaho in our i don't know because i guess we have ufos that like to visit idaho at least in pocatello yeah. according to my daughter <sighs> But, uh, but yeah, so I, I'm, I'm doing good and I'm drinking this good beer and I have, have a couple other beers and I'm, I'm looking forward to chatting with you. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, the reason I, I had some friends visit us from uh, that we hadn't seen a, a, in a long time from uh, when we lived in Eugene, Oregon, they were coming through town and they said, hey, we're, we're going to be coming through town on Monday uh, night. We would like to have dinner with you. And I said, of course. So that's why we postponed the show because I, I haven't seen them in a long time. And Sarah and I had a really great visit with them last night, Patty and Ken. And it was like, we, we, you know, it's, it's fun when you can get together with someone you haven't seen in a very long time. And it's just carry on a conversation. Like you just saw each other on, you know, last weekend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that was fun. And then uh, I think I mentioned in the last episode that we are doing home innovations, uh, master bath and kitchen at the same time. And if I didn't give you the PSA last episode, never do your kitchen and master bath at the same time. If you're, especially if you're doing the work yourself and especially if you're living in the house, Uh, you're doing it. This is your public service announcement. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So don't do uh, it. It's it's about killing me. And I've had to take a couple days off to get stuff done. that had to be done by the next day before the contractors continue working on the on the stuff. And so, um, I've, I've, I've completed two drywalling. I've never drywalled in my life and I've, uh, completed two sessions of it. One, the kitchen, uh, got the kitchen drywall up today and, uh, I did some bathroom. I still have some more bathroom to do because I just ran out of time and couldn't get the whole bathroom done last week. So, uh, and they got to the point where they didn't need me to get everything else finished because we're still waiting for our, our cabinets to come in for the bathroom. And so I have some time to get the drywall up on that side, but, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's killing me. I've haven't had a week. I haven't had a day off from work or from work at the house mm. <laughs> on this project for four weeks now. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's really beginning to wear on me. My joints, uh, I got, well, you can't really see, but I got sores and scratches and near nearly cut my wrist with a, with a knife, you know, when I, when it slipped, uh, while trying to trim some drywall. You don't have to push that hard. <laughs> I know. I know so. But yeah, that's, that's, that's how I'm doing. So, but that's enough about me. 
Let's get on with the show. But like always, before we get started, we always want to let anyone new listening to the show know what Tap to Craft podcast is all about. We are an educational podcast focused around celebrating all things craft beer because we want to assist you, our listener, along in your craft beer journey and adventures. And we are recording on Tuesday, as, or actually, let me start that over. <laughs> Tuesday, April 19th. Yeah, you, you, and you're listening to episode 202, and we're recording this on Tuesday, April 19th, 2022. And we are live on Facebook and Twitter if you'd like to join us. Normally, we're on, we, we do this on the Monday before our mm -hmm. recording uh, airs. The podcast airs on Thursday, but uh, today's Tuesday. But yeah, join us. We do have, you know, we've had four or five people jump in. Yeah. And... Uh, and join us uh, even on our off day, which is nice. Well, and no, no bachelor for Tara Carlson because she wanted to know what show is this. They're combining my favorite <laughs> things, beer and DIY. Yeah, we had a DIY oh, yeah. project oh, that yeah. happened uh, yesterday too. Good grief! Well, <laughs> we didn't do it, but there's a. I guess it's a a seven foot long and uh, I guess fourteen to eighteen inch wide trench in our uh, bathroom behind this wall over there that mm. we got to put in some new drainage pipe that was cracked in half so oh no oh yeah so it's um there's just concrete and then a gap about you know an inch or two tall and then tile so we're going well <laughs> we have to retile the whole bathroom and we went no let's uh let's paint it blue and we'll pour some epoxy in it and make it look cool like it's i don't know a lake or something i don't know but you oh, know wow. there's a, a concrete trench in oh. my bathroom right now so yeah well i guess we're there's construction going everywhere mm -hmm. yeah okay well uh and in this episode we are going to be discussing our favorite breweries that start with the letter f and uh, you know we've got up to f now and i i i, I haven't looked at what uh, what uh, chris has posted in the notes um it's possible that he may have uh, you know picked one of the ones i picked maybe we could talk about that together but maybe he has some unique ones of his own. I'll admit, I, I looked at yours first. Um, we'll touch on that when we, okay. when we get to it. Yeah, of course. I, I figured. I, I didn't want to steal all the glory, but I went first and put all mine down. So, you know. We had some that matched. Let's just say that. <laughs> of course. Of course. All right. And you can always count on some great conversation between Chris and I as well. And Chris and I would like to thank all of our Patreon supporters because this episode is brought to you in part by our satisfied Patreon supporters like Mike Allen, Bill Schlimmer, Amanda and Kevin Argauer, Mark Reedy, and Mike Blanchard, who are our virtual producers, and Tom Byrne, Jeff Seiler, Johan Helberg, Tara Carlson, Chad Lamassa, Mark Church, Eric Gromley, and Matt Knight, who want to buy us a virtual beer. And if you enjoy the content we provide, we invite you to support the show by toasting your hosts or buying us a virtual beer or even becoming a virtual producer. You can explore all the options on our support page by visiting patreon.com slash tap the craft. All right. And we got some feedback uh, from uh, Bill Slimmer, uh, who won our first Frost Buddy uh, contest last episode. That was out last episode, right? It was, yeah. Okay, I, I lose track. Everything's kind of a blur to me. Uh, and he just wanted to write to say, thanks, guys, for the Frost Buddy, and special thanks to Denny for the beer. I may use it for my beer number 1,000. I'm at 980 unique check-ins at the moment. So, yeah, I sent him his Frost Buddy. And because Bill uh, was so kind to send Chris and I some really fantastic beers, I thought the least I could do was add a beer to the – to the package as well and it's uh I, I added one of those ages the ages from the shoots that mm. nice blended uh um shoot now i can't think uh, uh what's the damn bl blended uh beer a cuvee i, I want to say cuvee but i don't think it was a cuvee yeah whatever but i sent one of those and i'm i think he'll enjoy it and uh it was just, just a special special thank you and he says on another note I was looking at my year in beer data and I took screenshots of it back in January. He said he, he finished the year 2021 with a total of 900 unique check-ins. Not that year, but at the end of the year, that, that's what he, um, how many he had. 
And then of those 900, 522 were in the year of 2021, mostly between March 10 and December 20th, uh, when, when, they, when he felt safe to go out in public with vaccinations and boosters. And he says, I got to thinking about how many of these taps there are within walking distance from our apartment in Wauwatosa, is that right? Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Sure. I, I, yeah, I'm not very good with names. You know, everyone knows that. So he lists out all these uh, places. Now I'm amazed because, for one thing, I I just I'm always amazed when there's places like that like this that have so many taps. I, I mean, it just blows my mind if they can fill that and keep those flowing. I'm hoping they're all kept pretty fresh and not just mm-hmm. letting it get stale. But he says that there's 24 taps at Draft and Vessel, which is a five minute walk. 30 taps at Cafe Ho- Hollander. Hollander. It's a Belgian cafe. It's also five minutes. 16 taps at Bu- Bucketaben Supper Club, which is a five minute walk. I should let you do this, Chris. With all no, your- no, you're nailing it. I, I'm just going to sit here and enjoy <laughs> this delicious beer from Crux. Okay. Okay. 12 taps from Metro Market. It's a grocery store, which is a 10 minute walk. 16 taps from fermentorium brewery which is a 20 minute walk and then last one which is a little bit further eight taps at ray's liquor store there it is which is a 30 minute walk or a 10 minute drive um yeah so those are a lot he has a lot of options and no wonder if he can go and get little tasters of these Mm -hmm. you know no wonder he's able to get so many um without having to buy full beers which is nice he says that's 106 taps within a 30 minute or less walk i guess that's how i got 522 check-ins in 2021, even with spending most of the summer at the cottage by the lake. I'll admit that, yeah, the thing that really amazed me, not only does he have so many options, but the fact that he was, for two of those, he was willing to walk 20 plus minutes to go get, to go there. Yeah, well, for one thing you're combining, I, I like the fact that you're you're combining you're, you're you're combining exercise and and hobby right you want to go out and drink but you're also getting your exercise and you don't have to worry about having one too many because yes. you're going to walk back and you're not getting or you know and if you don't walk back you can get an uber or, or a taxi or mm-hmm. you know or call being responsible to you. listen yeah, you're, not that, you're not that far so. that's that's good that's good you can take a take a half an hour walk i mean hell even if it took you 45 minutes to an hour to walk mm-hmm. home after you had a a little bit of everything. It's a lot yeah, better than. It's yeah, it's not bad. It's I mean, as long as the weather's good, that's the key, right? In summertime, the weather's I, good. I don't know about walking too much in Wisconsin in wintertime. That may be kind of uh, a bit listen, scary, right? I you can walk home for forty five minutes in Wisconsin in the middle of January, or you can get a, a <laughs> or you can get, or you can get a drunk driving charge. Yeah. You choose. You know, I'll walk. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll uh, bundle up. Yeah. I'll bundle up like. Uh, I can't put like my Alfie. arms down. Alfie. Yeah, like Ralphie. And <laughs> Ralphie's brother. What, what was Ralphie's brother's name? Oh my God! Why can't this is one of my Pete. favorite movies? No, it wasn't Pete. Ralphie wow. And oh wow. Randy. His name was Randy. 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 Excellent. <sighs> Excellent. <sighs> okay. okay. So, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Bill, for the feedback. And if you know, we do have a voicemail number for anyone out there. It's 208-536-3359, or if it's easier for you to remember, 208-53-ODDLY. Just pick up that phone, just speed dial, right? Put it on speed dial and just leave a quick message. It doesn't have to be long. Just, a, you know, a 30-second message just saying, hey, I'm, I enjoyed this part of the show, or hey, can you talk about this, or whatever you want to do. Just leave us a little quick voicemail, and we, we love to hear them, and we love to play them on the air. And if you don't want to leave a voicemail, it's okay. You can do like Bill did and send an email at tap to craft gmail.com or hit us up on social media. We've got Twitter and Instagram at tap to craft. And of course, our Facebook page, facebook.com slash tap to craft. And although we don't have any interaction really on the website, go visit our website. We have all kinds of, of you know, links to videos and, and that's where, things on there. That's where Denny keeps his spicy pictures too. That's right. Yeah, that's spicy. Right. <laughs> okay, well, Chris, <laughs> let's continue the conversation because now it is time to untap the craft and see what our listeners are drinking according to Untapped. <laughs> 
So I want to ch- uh, read a check-in from a brand new person who I've never read a check-in before. It's Lauren F., or as uh, other people might know her, as the Hoppy Mommy. That's right. On, uh, on Untapped. She's checking into some interesting things uh, that I'm only going to read just because it's quirky and weird. Um, and she only gave it like two cap ratings or one and three quarter caps. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> hard mountain dew oh no that's not even that's that's on untapped it is on untapped uh there's an original one she said it tastes like mountain dew go figure uh the second one was hard mountain dew black cherry which tastes like gatorade according to her i mean the can art's pretty cool um <laughs> and then there's hard mountain dew watermelon and uh her take on it it's like watermelon bubblegum <laughs> oh okay Follow me for more tips. Um, so next on the list, this is also another person that I don't think I've ever read a check-in from. The Beer Baron CT, or the <laughs> Robert Elliott said, Baja Blast is fire. Um, Baja Blast is uh, Beer Baron Connecticut, I do believe is that what that CT stands for. But uh, I don't know if we can read check-ins from another Beer Baron. Wait, this is not this. This, this, is not is the, not, this, this is not the this, real beer baron? No, this is not the real beer baron. Oh, jeez. And I didn't realize how hard it would be to uh, repeat that over and over again <laughs> without messing it up. But anyway, the beer baron CT is drinking a key lime hibiscus ale by Isla Murata. I'm sorry. Yeah, Isla Murata Beer Company at the Taste of Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival. Uh, so he's here in Florida, he or she. Um, crisp and refreshing with lime aftertaste. Super nice on a warm day. Three and a half caps for that beer. Um, next on the list, Mr. Jeff Seiler is drinking a Divine Anniversary IPA by Divine Barrel Brewing. On draft, delicious West Coast IPA, piney and citrusy. Four and a quarter caps for that one. Jeff's getting a little bit more drinking in too. We've also drinking a Pinky Ring Bling by Southern Range Brewing Company on draft. Wait, wait a minute. Did you repeat your check-in? No, you didn't. On draft, really tasty, hazy IPA, tropical, sweet, and crushable. Four caps for that one. Art Warcheck is drinking a dinner by Main Beer Company. Oh, on tap at the Market District. Four and a half caps for that beer. He's also drinking a Rack and Ruin by Jackie O's. Also on draft. Delicious, he says. Four and a half caps. For that one this part right here denny we've talked about this kind of being one of our favorite parts about what you and i get to do jeff seiler is drinking a lost in the vapors by burial brewing company he said so tasty grapefruit sweetness well done four and a quarter caps and mr eric gronley responded that sounds awesome jeff love mm-hmm. the grapefruit flavors cheers which i think is really cool that you know we can that's right Make new beer friends across the country. So, all right. Um, Buck Buchanan is drinking a Chinny Kesney by Prairie Artisan Ales. Uh, great beer for a tough day. Four and a quarter caps for that one. Buck, I hope the day got better, buddy. Uh, it's only Tuesday, so it just gets better from here. Um, Matt Knight is drinking a Red Wing Red Ale. Red Wings, by the way, up three to two over the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, by the Rohrbach Brewing Company. He said, already in my PJs and trying to relax with this fantastic beverage two hours ago. Uh, what time is it now? Seven o'clock, buddy. You were in, you were in your PJs at seven. <laughs> it may sound like I'm taunting you. I'm really just jealous. Uh, let's see. So four and a quarter caps for that beer. Jeff Seiler again. Eric Gronley said, Jeff is always drinking good beers. I like to live vicarious through his check-ins. So vicariously through his check-ins. Speaking of Jeff Seiler, he's drinking a Willow by Outer Range Brewing Company. Super tasty. Love Outer Range Brewing. Four and a quarter caps for that one. Continuing his check-in streak for the 22,733rd show in a row, Chad LaMassa is drinking a Rowdy Red Ale, which a couple of Red Ales on the check-ins this evening. He said, uh, I'm not sure if it's named after Rowdy Roddy Piper, but I decided it is. Mm-hmm. He's got a picture of a, uh, a little Funko Pop of Rowdy Roddy Piper on there. 
He said, which is why I use the Funko Pop as my picture. The beer itself is a nice malty red ale. Really liking it. Four and a quarter caps for that beer. Way to keep your check-in streak alive, Chad. <laughs> uh, Ryan Whedon is drinking an Oberon ale. It's Oberon season, folks, by Bell's Brewery. Four, or I'm sorry, three and three quarter caps for that check-in. David Martin is drinking a Salvatore by Della Hunt Brewing Company. Four cap rating for that one. Let's see. Next on the list. Come on, technology. You can do it. John WC drinking a Mango Tango Charlie by Flying Dog. That's with an F, Denny. Um, <laughs> Flying Dog Brewery at Olmstead Park Condominiums. He said definitely mango and tangerine and a little floral hoppiness, but not very bitter. Somewhat creamy and definitely smooth. Three and three quarter caps for that one. Mr. Bill Schlemmer, drinking his way around Florida, is drinking an Unholy by Coppertail Brewing Company. He said this triple is too malty. Oh. Three, three and a half caps for that one. Now, I don't know how old your can was, Bill, but usually that uh, that one stands out pretty good as a... Which, which one was that again? Uh, unholy. It's an uh, American triple. From which brewery? Coppertail, right here in Tampa. Oh, Coppertail. Have you, so you've had the triple from Coppertail? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually, uh, I don't find it to be too malty. I think, um, oh, Tara's going to be mad at us. Um, no, I. I... <laughs> how Sorry. can, I, yeah, how can it be my favorite F Brewery when they left Colorado, went all the way to Maryland, and now I can't buy their beer, so. They, they could they had a chance but then they left me high and dry i didn't even have this i didn't even have to say it which is great <laughs> anywho moving on um so yeah i actually enjoy that beer i don't know if his might just have been a little off or something but um that's one of those beers that it clocks in at um i want to say it clocks in at around nine percent nine point oh, two wow. yeah clocks in about nine point two and <laughs> There was a restaurant, for example, that was serving it on tap when we went and had our Christmas party and they were selling the 16 ounce pours of this beer for like seven bucks. Wow. Nice. That's a good add uh, to it was yeah. efficiency at its finest. Um, next on the list, scrolling on up, it is where we go. There we go. I already read that one. Unless Art, you're drinking another dinner by Main Beer Company um david martin <laughs> yeah i mean i don't blame him if i could it would, i would definitely drink it uh but david martin is drinking a holy cannoli by della hunt brew company nice coffee and vanilla flavors four and a quarter eric gronley is drinking all of all of us by fair state brewing cooperative at the ghq whoa if this is the future of IPA, count me in. A great lead off of soft tropical flavors, finishing with piney citrus hops as well. A great balance to the differences in IPA. Fair State rocks four and a quarter caps for that beer. And last but not least, Jeremy Garrison oh, Jeremy. is drinking a goddamn cheetah. By Payette Brewing Company. <laughs> oh, I haven't had that one yet. Light malty sweetness quickly gives way to tangerine, mango, pine, and hop finish. Three and three quarter caps. And that is what everybody's drinking. Oh, I lied. Jay Collins is, or JC is drinking a day's work round two by Wilmington Brewing Company. Three and three quarter caps for that beer as well. Now that's what everybody's drinking. Okay. I, I have one thing to say. I met Jeremy Garrison here at Match Swede on... Jeez, I can't remember what day. Sunday last week. <laughs> Sunday <laughs> last week. It all blends together. But, uh, it's, you know, I went to have a, grab a beer with my, my uh, buddy Corey and his wife, and uh, they were late getting there. It was actually, yeah, it was the day I took the day off. Oh, yeah, I think it was a Friday, and uh, I, she, I can't keep track of, of what I think it was a Friday. Maybe it was a Saturday. Actually, it was a Saturday. Now I think it was last Saturday, and we, um, we went to get a beer, and before uh, we sat down, and we were waiting for them to come, and I, 
I, I, I saw someone come into the, the brewery and they were talking and I, I heard someone else call him Jeremy and I looked up and I looked at him and was like, oh, that looks like Jeremy Garrison. And then he saw me, I saw him and he comes over to say hi. And uh, so we, we chat and uh, it was nice. And I'm hoping that we can get together. And he said he has some vertical, uh, verticals of, um... oh gosh, now I can't remember what, <laughs> he said he has some, some uh, verticals he wants to, you know, do some tasting about i think he mentioned what they were but now i can't remember and i said hey hit me up i'll come and, and help you drink those uh, those beers so that, that was nice to see him so shout out to jeremy finally we finally got to meet in person there's a few people that listen locally that we just haven't got together yet and so jeremy is one of the ones that i haven't got together and we finally did and and uh yeah, i'm glad to mark that off the list short term because now we we definitely i can hit him up and go get a beer but yeah that's all I want to say. Okay, I, I, I've switched beers myself, too. I finished that other one. Now, I'm drinking a Crux Fermentation. Ah. The Kiki Magic Hazy IPA. Well, so, how, how'd you get your, your Crux? You got that from Tavor? <clears throat> Tavor. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, I got this, uh, I want to say, about mm, three months ago. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, at least it's a, a porter, right? It's an Imperial Porter. Yeah, it's an Imperial Porter. Uh, yeah, clocking so in today. about 11%. And uh, wow. it was bottled on uh, August 18th of last year. So it's, it's got a few months on it, which I was, <laughs> um, I was happy to see it. And, and stuff like this, this was in their, uh, what was called their Banished series. Yeah, yeah, um, the ban- yeah, the, yeah, those Banished ones are good, although they are a bit spendy. Um, I'm sure it was. Yeah, I don't, I don't usually, I, I, I'm really caught... I, I wish I could just unlimited buy whatever I want, but I've really tried to, especially now that the beer prices have gone up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I talked about that before too, last, last episode. I'm just, I'm not used to paying $7 a pint at the brewery in Boise. It's just not something that's, that's I'm used to. So, (laughs) so that's kind of, uh, I'm still going. (laughs) I can't tell myself I'm going to stop going, but every time I get invited, I just, I go right. I, I I can't help myself, but I instead of drinking five beers like I did that one night, I I stuck to three beers. The next time I showed up in Match Suite, so I didn't buy as many beers. Um. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, it was when I got this glass. That's when I saw Jeremy. Is when I ah. got uh, Pints Up Idaho Saturday. That's that's right. And that night I drank five five beers. <laughs> I and I lost track of how much I was drinking until I saw the bill and I'm like, oh my gosh, I just drank a. I just I could have bought uh, three six packs for that price. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, you're drinking you're drinking at our prices now. I know, but this is Boise. It's just so it's so odd because we all these people are moving into town, and the housing price the housing just shot out of the roof. No one, I mean, no one can afford housing anymore. You could buy Hopefully yourself a new truck with the equity in your house now. I, no, I already have a new truck. I, I, I don't want to spend the equity. I, I, I'm, I'm almost got the sucker paid off. I don't want to uh, have any more debt on top of it. I that. know, I know. But we wanted to move to a, uh, a smaller house closer to downtown because we spend a lot of time downtown and a single story. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I just can't afford to spend one over one million dollars to go get a house i'm sorry i just i'm sorry sarah you, well, you're gonna have to stay in this house that's why we're fixing this one up yeah yeah because uh, I, I i was told her i'll fix this one up to the way you like it if i can save spending an extra 600 grand to get a house that you know i'll be paying for until i'm dead listen that's that's a good choice uh regardless yeah yeah I don't know how we got sidetracked onto that. Let's get a, let's carry on with this. We're beer drinking. Show. <laughs> we're drinking. I'm enjoying the beers. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, me too. I, I worked up a, a sweat today and and so now this beer is just making me feel good. I mean, it's making my back feel better because it's like mm-hmm. a natural it's helping uh, you relax. You know, I hear yeah. I hear beer is uh better for aches and pains, it's better than acetaminophen. Yeah. Yeah. Whether I, it's uh, true or not, I'm gonna no, test it, it out. No, honestly, <laughs> it, it it does. But the problem is, is that it wears off pretty quick too. Yeah. But it does help me. Like if, if I drink beer, it does help with the pain temporarily because it kind of numbs the nerve endings, I think. Yeah. But it, it doesn't last forever. And like, then, then of course, if I drink too much, then I'm up going 
you know, to the bathroom five times in a night and that's not helping my sleep any. So nope. And then how many times you get up and down and then it makes your back hurt more. And then it's just, true. it's a vicious true. cycle. Yeah, vicious that's cycle. true. That's true. Okay. Well, Hey, let's carry on. It's now time for the beer speak one Oh one segment where we briefly define common and not so common beer terminologies. And this episode, we will explain what it means when we talk about the mouthfeel of a beer. Remember last episode, we talked about the body of a beer and the mouthfeel is a little bit different than them. I think, we, you know, we had a, I don't know. I think we had some, something with the mouthfeel. I, I you know what? yeah, I, I hiccuped and said, I said mouthfeel because I was talking about a beer that I was drinking or the, oh. one of my new and noteworthies. And you were like, no, that's not the word we just talked about. <laughs> Now it is. <laughs> so I thought, let's talk about mouthfeel because yeah. mouthfeel is something that is very important to the satisfaction of drinking a good quality beer. So mouthfeel is the texture one perceives in a beer. It includes carbonation, the fullness, and the aftertaste. This aspect is the sensory experience of the whole inside of your mouth and throat. Now, keep in mind, you don't taste cold. You feel it. Got that? You don't taste cold, you feel it. <laughs> Mouthfeel. Uh, finally, carbonated beers with small with their small bubbles tend to have a creamy mouthfeel. A, like a continental lager beer may be effervescent, while a stout is soft and chewy. But none of these descriptions have anything to do with how the beer tastes. It's all about how it feels in your mouth. Uh, Mouthfeel is how the beer beer feels, in summary. So. That's there you go. Now you can use mouthfeel uh, descriptors when you're checking into your own tap beers and and explain what you're feeling uh, while you're drinking that beer. Got that, Chris? I did. And you know what? You you're can use learned it. Up. <laughs> you can use that for other things other than beer too. True. Yeah. Yeah. No. So mouthfeel. I'm talking in the beer, but yeah, mouthfeel mm -hmm. is with food or drink, right? It's just it's same thing with. Like the mouthfeel, like a lot of people don't like certain textures of food. That's the mouthfeel, right? Bananas, um, you know, porridge or cream of wheat or mm -hmm. oatmeal or things that have mushiness. Cottage cheese for me, that mouth that 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 mouthfeel of eating cottage cheese just makes me cringe. I don't like that. Uh, but I eat yogurt all the time, so I don't know why. Just that does chunky bits. It's a texture. Yeah, it's a texture. It's a texture I don't like thing. that chunky, chunky bit. So, all right. So there's the mouthfeel. Okay, Chris, we're moving right along. I told you that uh, I was going to try to keep this show to an hour long because I've got to get this thing edited so it can get released in on 48 time. hours. That's it has right. to be ready for release in 48 hours. And I got to do that between doing my home improvement projects and going to work all at the same time. So uh, let's, let's let's get into the brew buzz. Okay. <laughs> And the Brew Buzz is devoted to discussing various beer-related topics. And this week, we discuss our favorite breweries that start with the letter F. Okay, Chris, you what do you want? You, you want to go? So, you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? I think you should go first. But I also, um, I also, uh, I want to ask everybody else that might be watching with us: is what are your favorite F breweries? You can comment with us on the on the live stream or uh shoot us a message on facebook or comment on anything social at tap the craft that way you can tell us what your favorite f breweries are like uh bill schlemmer did he said his favorite f brewery is fort george that's a which, good one man i'd have to agree with him on that one yeah that, that actually made my list so and there you go eric gronley fair state brewing cooperative which oh. he uh which is one of his last check-ins too so yeah yeah so denny let's let's hear about your f breweries Let's okay, get, let's get effed up. Let's get effed up. So uh, the brewery that I chose for my, I have two, but the one that I'll say that's, a, that's a, that the, the first choice, and I'll have a second choice. The first choice is Fremont Brewing mm -hmm. out of uh, uh, Ball, you know, Ballard area of, of Seattle. Uh, I've had 63 unique check-ins to their beers, at least the ones that haven't got erased off of Untapped. <laughs> Because it seems like Untapped is erasing my check-ins like crazy right now, um, but uh, but yeah, I I fell in love with Fremont Brewing. Pretty much the I, I can't remember if I was getting Fremont before I visited Seattle and, and John uh, in Seattle, or if I first had my Fremont beer. I think I first had my Fremont beers from beers that John provided me, 
Um, when I'd come to, when I'd go to visit him in Seattle, when he lived in Seattle, uh, he would have a care package for me to take home and he would have some Fremont beers in, in the care package. I think that when I first uh, came across Fremont and then shortly after th that, uh, Fremont started distributing into Boise and, and I just pretty much love everything that they brew. Um, they have so many different varieties. So let's go into a little history about Fremont Brewing. So Fremont Brewing is located in the West Woodland area of Ballard neighborhood of, of Seattle, Washington, with a tap room and a beer garden located in the Fremont neighborhood. The brewery creates small batch artisan beers and was founded in 2009 by Sarah Nelson and Matt uh, Linscombe. And uh, they explain why they started a brewery. It says Fremont Brewing was born of our love for our home and history, as well as the desire to prove that beer is made with the finest local ingredients. Organic, when possible, is not the wave of the future, but the doorway to the beer's history. Starting a brewery in the midst of a great recession is clearly an act of passion. We invite you to come along with us and enjoy that passion because beer matters. That's really and, cool uh, that, uh, that they're, I guess they're about section says something about starting a brewery in the midst of the great recession mm -hmm. i mean how many people went through that two years ago i mean it wasn't like some it wasn't a financial recession but yeah. because of yeah. the pandemic it... yeah yeah i mean the pandemic definitely i mean and and there are some brew, like well we know uh, core four brewing right mm -hmm. they opened and then as soon as they opened they cl everything closed down yeah and they survived the two years and they're yep. doing they just got done celebrating their two-year anniversary and and i think it's because for one thing that you have to have good beer mm -hmm. and we definitely saw that they have some good beer and you know, they have to, you have to be able to adapt to whatever the situation is. So they might have had a grand plan and that grand plan had to shift gears and kind of adapt into what, you know, to make it successful. And I'm glad they're doing well. But yeah, a lot of breweries open during, during the pandemic or right before the pandemic and, and are still, and are doing well, which is good. I'm glad to see that, that that's the case. Okay, so um, the adventure began with the 15 barrel brew house that was from Red Lodge Ales, uh, and along with two 30 barrel fermenters and an annual production capacity of 1,000 barrels. They now brew in two facilities called Fremont East, which is the original location, and Fremont West, which is an 80,000 square foot facility just about a mile down the road. At Fremont East, they currently operate on a 30 barrel premier stainless brew house. This three vessel steam powered system was installed in May of 2014 to replace the original brew brewing systems, which is long out of business now, 15 barrel, two vessel direct fire brew house that was purchased used from Red Lodge Ales. After reaching production capacity at Fremont East, they expanded to a new production facility a mile down the road from the original facility. They call it Fremont West. This facility operates on an 80 barrel GEA Hupman three vessel steam powered system commissioned in July of 2016. And some of their popular beers that I've put down here, the ones that I really enjoy and I drink a lot of uh, Lush IPA. Man, I love that IPA. It's an IPA that is just when I, when I want an IPA and I see it, I can just grab it and I know I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, Chris, I know you enjoy this as well, much as I do, the Dark Star Imperial Mel Scott. Oh, yeah. Well, even Lush, I, too. That, that stuff's delicious. Yeah, yeah. I love this Dark Star and all the variants of Dark Star that they do as well. Um, another beer that I that I drink all the time is Sky Kraken Hazy Pale Ale. It's a pale ale, hazy pale, that just is really easy drinking, lower alcohol, and just delicious. All their Bee Bomb Winter Ale variants. Um, I've had a number of them. Uh, yep. that I talked about on the show. I know, Chris, you've bought some and enjoyed them. Those are all fantastic. <clears throat> and I also talk a lot, if you look at my untapped, I try to get every single of their Head Full of Dynamite series. Those this are is a, amazing. Those are so yeah, good. This is where they experiment with hops and they just do some wild stuff. And most of them are good. I will say that some I've been let down with, but not like I didn't, like it was horrible beer, just that it didn't live up to the previous one that I had, right? You have a one that's so... Yeah fantastic you expect all of them to be that fantastic um, and they all have different flavors right they're using different hops in a different way 
to create a really fantastic beer. So I love that series. And of course, I've talked about it on the air many times, their Field to Ferment Fresh Hop series that they do every year um, with fresh hops. So those are just some beers that I really enjoy. What, what about you, Chris? Have you had, I, I know you've had yeah, Lush and, and Dark Star and some of the Bee Bonds, but are you <clears throat> able to get very much Fremont? Um, so we don't see Fremont at all. I was literally looking that up. I've checked into 16 of their beers, uh, which surprises me. I'm surprised I've had that many of them. Um, but there I've had a couple of the head full of dynamites, uh, a couple of those different series or a couple of different beers out of that series. But I mean, just those key ones that you talked about the dark star and then the bear and then the barrel age dark stars and then the B bombs and it, they, I wish I could get so much more of them. I yeah. really do. Yeah. But, you know, I guess it's kind of a grass is always greener kind of thing. too. <laughs> I'm sure there's stuff that's, you know, I could probably, you know, drive 20 minutes and get something similar. But uh, yeah. I don't know. That's just what to see. But, yeah, I was surprised I had 16 of them. Yeah, that's nice. For, yeah, for being, yeah, for being in, in Florida. That's, that's good to have 16. That's good. Okay, Chris. So I did my first one how about you do your first one so i want to do my first one with a disclaimer because denny i mean you you and i had a conversation um recently i can't remember when but about this brewery um founders brewing company out of grand rapids michigan and you and you and i were having a the beginnings of a discussion on well let's just cut to it you're not a big fan of them anymore Oh, we were talking about, hey, what about breweries that, that you can get, that I can get, so we can be yeah. tasting those. Yeah. Um, what, first, can, can you give like a quick snapshot of what changed for you? Like what, what happened so, with them? Yeah, they had some issues going on in some of their tap rooms uh, where there was some inappropriate Say no you more. Know, That's gesture, good enough. Yeah. Gesture, gesturing going on to uh, to people uh, of different races and different things. And, okay. And it wasn't handled well. And I just I, I just think that uh, I mean some of the jokes and things that were that this that these people were having to deal with uh, when it came out was just not right. I mean I understand. I don't know. I just just treat people with respect. I think is the best thing. And I didn't like the way they handled it. And and there's some other things that went on. So I kind of just got kind of turned off by, by the, the behavior and the mm -hmm. way that the company responded to it. Um, that I said, you know, I, there's a lot of other beers and, and I'll go ahead and drink stuff from other breweries that, that I enjoy that, that treat their employees uh, with respect, more respect than, than that. So that's, that's the reason why. Okay. And I was just, I was kind of curious because I, I honestly, I didn't hear about I mean, there was, there was a period of time, probably, I guess about 12 to 18 months ago where a lot of that kind of, that kind of stuff started mm -hmm. coming out. And honestly, it probably all blurred together for me. Um, Cause I mean, we had that even happen here at a location here in Tampa. Um, and it was, it was, it sucks to hear it anywhere at any time, but uh, anywho, uh, this was this is a this is a brewery, guys. That that me personally, um, I I still will pick up off the shelf because you know from from my perspective, at least that the the, uh, the beers they're still really nice and solid, and and I still want to grab a hold of those and some good daily drinkers too, like their porter um, or their their backwoods bastard is still yeah. one that I get. Yeah. Or I do enjoy that beer. <laughs> even their their KBS now their KBS or their Kentucky breakfast. Yeah, Kentucky Breakfast Stout um, has spawned off a couple of different variants, which wasn't a huge fan of all of them, but, uh, you know, they were still pretty good. Um, they started back in 1997, which is uh, pretty awesome to hear that they're still going strong. Uh, the co-founders, Mike Stevens and Dave Engbers, opened the door to their 9,800 square foot brewery in downtown Grand Rapids. And the first batches of beer are brewed. 1,396 total breweries in the country at that point. And if you guys love history kind of like I do, it's a really cool page. If you go to, um, go to their website, they talk about 
each individual year from 97 moving forward and like 98 the tap room opens for business and then initial hours are restricted to thursday friday and saturday with mike and dave serving as the only bartenders mm. Wow, <laughs> man, that, that kind of stuff. Like I, I remember hearing John was talking about that when he opened Trek, he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm the only one in there. I'm brewing yeah. and then I'm staying and I'm, and I'm tending bar and we're open like two, three, four days a week or something. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I hear people do that a lot. Um, or they, uh, or founders 1999, they fall behind financially. Tap room sales are slow and the brand struggles. Mike and Dave's income comes only from bartending tips. <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa. We're tipping well. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Um, and it's, it's really, honestly, I think it's a really cool story because I don't want to hit on every single year, but like this one just popped up and it's a cool picture. Uh, 2000, the year 2000, the brewery is losing money and on the verge of bankruptcy due to making unremarkable beers. Mike and Dave purchase a pair of bolt cutters when the landlord threatens to lock them out if they don't pay their rent. <laughs> so wait a minute, they were making unremarkable beers at back then? Yeah, in 2000, right? And if you fast forward, it's, it's a really cool kind of story, and they have a, a little quip for every single year. Um, what was but, their turning point? So 2000, they were making see. crappy beer. Then what was the turning point where they started making headway and, and becoming? Um, next year, 2001. Okay. What, what was, what was that? Let's see. What, they, what was that change? They decide, they decide to sell the filter, which. <laughs> they they, they decided on, to no on. longer filter their beer. Is hang that what on. You're saying? I'm getting there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they begin brewing the beers that they love, adopting the oh. quote brewed for us philosophy. This yeah. marks a turning point. There it is for founders. No expenses spared to make complex, flavorful ales with huge aromatics and big body. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So make the beers. I think that's the key too, is you have to, I understand that breweries have to survive and you have to mm -hmm. brew the things that people want, like hazy IPAs. But it, if you're not doing what, you, what calls to you, right? If, if you have a call to make good, chewy beers that, that you enjoy and you think that, you know, that are really quality, then make those beers. Mm -hmm. I mean, because if you're not, you know, you're, just, you're doing yourself a disservice, right? If you're just brewing the stuff that you think you should brew because everyone else is doing it, then that's not right, right? Your heart's not in it, and uh, it's not satisfying. So, yeah, so obviously... They started doing things that were outside of the the box, right? Outside yeah. of the norm, and, yeah. and then they started getting recognized for uh, having some beers that aren't typical. Well, hell, we just talked about these two. Two thousand two, uh, Dirty Bastard debuts. Nice. Um, and uh, KBS Bourbon Barrel Aged KBS debuts on draft. Um, two thousand three, fourteen hundred and eighty five breweries in the country. And they're so, so only a hundred more than they, than they yeah. <laughs> and then their first bourbon barrel aged beer debuts in bottles in 2003. 2004 beer advocate users rate KBS the second best beer in the world. <laughs> Founder staff grows to 13 employees. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that was a real turning point when when they start getting recognized for world best. Uh, I mean, oh. that's, that's nuts. Like, and, and it, I think it's oh, cool. She's to... locked up. Mm. Okay. Okay. I think it, I'm good now. <laughs> no, you're frozen. Your video is frozen. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> you were doing so good. I don't know what you got to tell know. these people to stop YouTubing. <laughs> stop TikToking. <laughs> I'm taking, I'm taking over the network here in a second. <laughs> no, you were doing great until just now. And then I'm like, wow, this is great. We've gone you know, 45 minutes without 50 minutes without even a hiccup. And then all of a sudden you start freezing. Oh, it's, it's freaking Tina's phone. There you go. See, I told you. It, I'm going to limit, was... I'm going to limit her access here. Watch this. <laughs> you got control. I do. It, it's, it, it creeps me out, but I, I, I like it all at the same time. Oh. I'm going to kick her off of the network. Yeah. Um, tell her to, to go, go, You'll steal the neighbors. 
well and also to founders website was very animated and there was a lot of oh, information okay. on it too okay. so um but yeah it, it's just kind of an amazing story whether whether you like them or not just going from the hey we uh we got paid because of the tips that people left us um and for anybody that's ever owned or run a business i mean hell megan and i had that very same thing i mean there were there were times in the beginning where we didn't take paychecks and stuff yeah. like that so yeah. i i love seeing stories like that um to see how people their struggles and what they've overcome uh yeah. to me i think it's pretty cool um so yeah founders brewing company i've had 51 of their beers which uh is that's kind of astounding to me um, but also on there, Fat Heads Brewing out of Middleburg Heights, Ohio, is uh, also one that we've had plenty of 27 beers, not as many as founders. But um, 1992, they got started. Uh, they, they had uh, a few years later, they doubled in size. Now they have, what, four or five locations around the Cleveland area. I know they just opened another one in, in Canton, Ohio, where the football hall of fame is, I think in 2018, I saw on their website. Um, they used to distribute down here to Florida, but they wanted to focus their uh, efforts a little closer to home. So we don't get them anymore, but, uh, but that's, uh, those are really my, my big F beers or my big F breweries is uh, between founders and fatheads. And funny enough, Ohio and Michigan, two states that will fight to the bitter end. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> um, but yeah, those were those are as far as my F breweries go, two of my big ones. And then we can talk about some honorable mentions after your. Do you have another F brewery, Denny? Yes, I do. I do have another F brewery. Yeah, let's talk about and your I other think, F brewery. I think this one you probably want to talk about as well because mm -hmm. I think we both really have a an admiration for this brewery. I I mean. I'm I'm grateful that I can get their beer in my area because their beer is great. And that's Firestone Walker Brewing. And they're out of Paso Robles, California. And uh, I've had 45 unique beers from Firestone Walker, uh, which is, I think, pretty good for being a, a mid to Southern California uh, brewery. And they have a quote on their website. It says, at Firestone Walker, Beer before glory is our mantra for reminding ourselves that we do what we do because of the beer, period. It's our battle cry to never accept well enough. It's the high aim for a perfect beer we will never make. Beer before glory is our craft ever honed, honed on the stone of humility. I love the fact that they say that they're aiming for the perfect beer that they'll never make. <laughs> But you know what? So many of their beers, to me, are five cap rating beers, right? Or, you know, nearly perfect beers to me. I don't, I don't know what perfection is, but they do amazing blends of of beers, and I'll, I'll tell you, I just, I, I love their the beers they they brew, and they they just they do a great job, and. Um, so I have a little bit more here to, 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 that I got from the history here. It says, born in a humble shed in the back 40 of the family vineyard, Firestone Walker is a California beer company like no other, founded by two brothers-in-laws who simply wanted to make the perfect beer. The story begins with Adam Firestone, a.k.a. the bear, and huh. David Walker, a.k.a. the lion, debating the subject of beer. The The... The bear and the lion is the uh, are, is the the logo for Firestone mm -hmm. Walkers, one on each side. Um, their search for a de for a decent local ale proved futile, and it wasn't long before they goaded themselves into brewing their own. Their initial brewing efforts were made in a secondhand brew house with converted winemaking equipment, mostly with mixed results. But the hook was set when their first recipe for double barrel ale was attempted. The brewery was founded in 1996, and in 2021, they celebrated their 25th anniversary of brewing that first batch of Double Barrel Ale. When Adam and David moved their brewing operations to Paso, Paso Robles in, 20, in 2001, they also landed the perfect brewmaster at the perfect time. Matt Brindelson, 
has worked his magic at Firestone Walker ever since, earning the nickname Merlin. On his way to becoming renowned as one of the world's leading brewmasters. In 2015, Firestone Walker combined with Duval Morgat Brewery of Belgium. Duval Morgat became the majority stakeholder of in Firestone Walker, and founders David Walker and Adam Firestone remained as minority owners. And Walker serves as a CEO, and Firestone sits on the board. And some of their popular beers that, that I've really enjoyed. I absolutely love Double Barrel L, although you uh, you can't find it anymore. I'm not sure if it's only served locally at the pub or what the deal is, but um, you can't get DBA anymore, it seems like. Um, another one I love is Pivo Pills, a fantastic Pilsner. Their, their flagship beer is their 805 Blonde Ale, which is their area code for their phone, phone area code. Um, we get that here. It's okay. I, I, I'll... I'll drink five, uh, 805, but um, honestly, it's not my favorite. I, there's other lighter ales that I enjoy more than 805. And then one I do enjoy, enjoy is Mind Haze IPA. I, I enjoy that beer, and I enjoy all of their anniversary ales. Uh, I've talked about these ales many times on the show. Um, they used to come in bigger bottles, and they started making these little 12-ounce bottle versions, and I just love that I can buy a 12-ounce bottle of these for 10 to Fourteen dollars, and every one is a is a a blend of a bunch of different barrel aged beers, and they blend it perfect, and it's just like a magic in your mouth. Really, it's, it's <laughs> that's a good way to put it. It I I can't, I mean, when they say they're still looking to produce a perfect beer, I mean, I I can't imagine their anniversary ales being anything but perfect. I mean, these are so good, and. The last one that I really, really enjoy is their Parabola uh, Bourbon Barrel yeah. Aged Stout, Imperial Stout. That that is a fantastic beer and is often a base to a lot of these blends that they that they do, uh, as well as some barley wines they do as well that I that I enjoy mm -hmm. too. So so those are my two breweries. Now, Chris, you're also a fan of Firestone Walker, right? Yeah. I so I think uh, Untapped is kind of crashed right now, but I mm -hmm. was able to dig out of there that I. I've, I've had 19 beers. Oh, there we go. We're back. Uh, 19 beers from Firestone Walker, which again, it's just like Fremont. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's weird. Their website's crashed right now. Um, <laughs> but the fact that I've been able to have almost 20 beers from a brewery that I can't touch until I, I don't know if I ever, unless I ever hit Nevada, <laughs> like when I, when I make it to Nevada or if I'm in California mm -hmm. or, you know, when I eventually make it out to freaking Boise, um, yeah. like I, I can't, I can't get Firestone Walker, you know, unless I'm out that way or somebody sends it to me, <clears throat> but having 20 of those beers, well, I'm sorry, 19 of those beers, uh, is, is pretty awesome. And, and I'm with you in the fact that they are probably as close to some of the best beers that I've been able to have. Um, I think I had a 2016 Velvet Merkin the other a uh, couple of months ago, which was yeah, just, yeah. I I just I wanted to. Just, Those are good too. <laughs> oh my gosh, man! It was just <laughs> I I I take a sip of it and I just wanted to let it sit on my palate, and then when I finally drank it, I didn't want to keep consuming it because it was going to go away, but then I still wanted to drink it because it was so delicious. I just, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they do make some just phenomenal beers. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I see that, uh, that your honorable mentions are both Fremont and Firestone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, yeah. So I do have uh, my honorable mentions are Fort George brewery. Mm -hmm. um i i do love fort george i love like one of my favorite beers that they do is their three-way ipa every year with with three different brewery collaborations um i i love i love that ipa um I, it says i've only had 30 unique beers from them but man i could swear i've had more because i i buy pretty much everything that comes into town <laughs> anything new especially but they have the fanzine ipa they have uh uh they have a stout, Cavatica, Cavatica stout that's really good, Imperial stout. Uh, I mean, they have a lot of beers that are, are just fantastic. And I, I love Fort George. So, I, and I, 
Bill Schlimmer also loves Fort George. So that's good that, that we both did that. And then the, the last honorable mention goes to Full Sail Brewing. Full Sail is important. I mean, I almost, I would have Full Sail higher on my list if they were still per, like, I don't know, innovating and coming out with new stuff and not just kind of sticking around. The stuff I get here in Boise is, is maybe they are doing stuff more that shows up in Oregon, but they're not distributing stuff that's any different than the stuff they've put out every year. And the one beer that I absolutely love from them is their Wassell Winter Ale. And I haven't seen Wassell for five years, I think, in Boise. Yeah. They only When they do serve it, it's only at the pub in Fort Hood, Oregon. And I'm not driving all the way to Fort Hood, Oregon <laughs> to to go drink, you know, this beer I love. When when I would drink Wassail, you know, I would buy that's like Jubilee, right? It's it's the it's the uh yin the, the yin and yang of winter ales for me. Jubilee is got a certain flavor that's that's just like Jubilee. And Wassail has a, another flavor that's Wassail that's similar but different. It has more spiciness to it and and it's just an easy you know really good winter ale so those are like the two that i just gravitate to every winter but i haven't been able to enjoy wassail for so long and i want that beer to be produced now maybe there's not a lot of people out there that drink it maybe that's why they they don't produce it or send it out anymore but man i i want that beer so if they could produce wassail that'd be great and as i mentioned when we did our mount beer more our mount rushmore of beer uh full cell brewing was one of the beers that was in my mount rushmore because mm -hmm. they provided that you know that turning point where i could appreciate hoppy beers when they had that very special pale um which was a supposedly a very special pale golden ale but it was like a super like a hoppy pale l like, like like an introduction to ipa uh, and I just drank so much of that beer. That was like a turning point in my craft beer journey. So Full Sail is an important brewery to my, uh, you know, to my journey. Mm -hmm. But it's just fallen in the last 10 years. It's fallen away. Um, they used to do these these special 22-ounce bottles that they allowed their brew their brewmasters to brew whatever they wanted. And they were called the Brewer's Bucks. And I have some of their bottles right there. Um, it's hard to see, but they're right at the, the end. And these are all beers styles that, that the brewers wanted to brew that were totally like their own thing. And they were fantastic. I, they did a malt liquor. Now the malt liquor one wasn't my favorite, but they allowed their brewers to brew a malt liquor craft malt liquor and put it out in these 22 ounce bottles. And I bought it and I enjoyed it, but I'm not a big malt liquor fan, but it was good for what it was, but all the other ones were like super good, but they haven't let their, that hasn't happened, right? They stopped doing that and they're not innovating as much. And I hope, I really hope they're not going to fade away. Like so, you know, many breweries do, you know, we lost Bridgeport a couple of years ago. Um, and they made that again, they were on my Mount Rushmore of beer for their IPA. Um, I, I would hate to see full cell disappear because they, mm. you know, they are an important part of my uh, craft beer journey. Okay, well, I think I've rambled on enough about that. It's take, that, that took a lot longer than I figured. We're at an hour already, Chris. Damn, I didn't make it under an hour. But guess what? We're at our new and noteworthy beer. So, Chris, looks like uh, you have uh, two yeah. new beers to name. Is that what you said? Yeah, so I am. Um, <laughs> and I was hoping that, you know, Untapped wasn't going to be broken so I could talk about a couple of these. But we made a trip over to Corporate Ladder. Uh, what was it? Friday or Saturday night. Yeah. And it was myself. It was Megan. Uh, it was Tina. And we actually took Tina's brother, Anthony, with us. And Anthony is very, Anthony's like uh, 23 years old. According to him, he hates beer. <laughs> okay. If you're going to go to a brewery with a, a with someone that tells you they hate beer. I have to, and not to toot my own horn, but I'm the perfect guy to go with. <laughs> oh, you don't like beer? Come here. Let me show you something. You haven't, you haven't tried enough yet. <laughs> right. So we, um, and, and, uh, Brian over at corporate ladder, uh, 
if he ever gets to hear this, man, thank you so much for taking such good care of us. Because we basically went in there and went, I because I ordered uh, an oatmeal cookie lager that they had. <laughs> oh my God. Three, listen, 3.4%. They serve it to you in this big old 16 or 20 ounce, just nice size beer cup. I didn't want to go in there and get smashed and hammered. I just, yeah, let's yeah. sip on a beer. The girls and Anthony, they wanted to grab a couple. Let's try this. Let's try that. Um, and I was really excited because I had Anthony take a sip of this wild berry sour that, that they had. And he goes, Oh, that, I, I kind of like that. So he ordered a full pour of that. Oh, wow. And I mean, the, I, I want to say we had 12 or 15, just five ounce pours on the table at one time. So, uh, Brian over at corporate ladder, thank you so much for taking good care of us over there. Um, but we had anything from the 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 dessert station cherry amaretti cookie to mm-hmm. cherry pie to bananas and cream to i mean it was a lot of fruity stuff but man it all was really good and i think everything that i drank i rated it for four caps and above i want to say i checked into at least 10 beers that night so it, it was hard to pick one over the other because there were some that were fruity and tart and that were really nice and then there was the the oatmeal cookie lager that they had, which I had two of, mm. which was, again, it was a little on the sweeter side, a little malty, but it had some cinnamon in it too. And it, But there was also notes of the raisins in there, which was kind of weird, but I liked it all at the same time. So it was really cool to be able to go through and try all these different beers. And we were even getting, going so far as to mixing a couple of them and having fun with them. Cause there was one that was like a, um, it almost tasted like a mimosa, but it was just like a, it was like a tangerine sour ale. And then we had this other one that was like a, a coffee breakfast ale that had some maple in it. And if you drank one right after the other, it was like, drinking mcdonald's orange juice and having mcdonald's hotcakes for breakfast (laughs) i mean it it was it was pretty awesome so um yeah we had a a little bit of everything so i i didn't i didn't want to type out a whole giant list but guys if you get the chance to go over to corporate ladder in here in florida they're in palmetto florida just south of tampa go simple as that just go um because Denny, anything I've ever had from them has just been top-notch stuff. Yeah, nice. Oh. Um, so let's hear about some of your new and noteworthy beers, Denny. Okay, well, I won't even try to get on untapped since you said it's down. I, I was on it earlier and it was down too, so okay. I'm, I'm so glad it's it was not just me. me. Yeah, okay, no, so... I, I was trying to look up the uh, how many beers I've had from founders, but it would it was like it was just like scrolling like black screen from of death so yeah i i gave up on it but i i can talk briefly on 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 these that i have first off i'm going to talk about a beer that my buddy alex left me with last time he was here uh it's it's from it's an israeli beer uh, from shapiro um brewery shapiro is one of the breweries i really like in israel so oh, i'm burping i just got the <laughs> beer and i'm burping up must be talking too much and burping up my uh, my beer, but um, it's called uh, barrel. It's the barrel aged version of Jack's Winter Ale, and I've mentioned Jack's Winter Ale a number of times from my visits to Israel. And this is the barrel barrel aged version, and I'll tell you what, I enjoy Jack's Winter Ale, but this bourbon, this barrel aged version, was just fantastic. I mean, really had just enough oakiness barrel character to it that uh, that just made it enhance the the, the flavor uh, and i gave that a four and a half cap rating i really enjoyed that so thank you alex for for let me for for bringing that special beer to me and then the last three i'm going to talk about i i made a visit to clairvoyant brewing here in boise uh, i've mentioned clairvoyant many times i i love i love their beer um, the problem is is that it's just not convenient for me to go to the brewery so I have to make a, a, a make an effort, and the effort was because uh, one of my customers that I work with he messaged me saying, "Hey, um, you you up for a beer tonight?" And I said, "Hell yeah, I need a beer. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a rough week. Let's go to a beer tonight. I'm I'm free." And and he said, "Where do you want to go?" I said, "Well, I tried to pick somewhere that was close by. I was between 
his house and my house. So we both weren't driving like neither one of us are driving out of our way too much. And I've been wanting to go to Clairvoyant Brewing for a while. I just need a reason to go. And and having my buddy Bob say that he wanted a beer, I said, you know what? Let's go to Clairvoyant. And he had just been there that weekend. And uh, But there was beers there that he enjoyed and wanted to drink some more. So he said, yeah, let's go to Clairvoyant. And so that's what we did. We went to Clairvoyant in the middle of the week, last week. And um, I had, I don't know, two or three beers when I was there. And then I brought a can home. And uh, the first beer I'm going to talk about that I had on site was Clairvoyant Brewing's Baltic Porter. And everyone knows how I love Baltic Porter. And this beer, it was just made really well. It had that characteristic of that Baltic Porter yeast, you know, lagerly yeasty, dark roast stuff. I, I can't explain it. It had that Baltic Porter taste. Uh, and I just really enjoyed it. It, it went down really smooth. Uh, I get out a four and a quarter rating. And um, and then I also had, I didn't put the rating here, but I, I also, I'm going to talk about the next, the, the, the first beer I had before the Baltic Porter, though, was the Clairvoyant Brewing's Red Rye Ale. And everyone knows that I love rye. And I also enjoy a good red ale. And this was a combining a red ale with rye in there. And this was really easy drinking. Um, it had a bit of, it felt like there was sweetness to it, but it wasn't really sweet. It, it had like a spiciness of the rye with a, a little bit of the maltiness of the red, but it also had hops in there too. Just a really pleasant drinking beer. And I gave that a four cap rating. And then the last beer that I'll talk about, um, I brought home with me in a can. And this is their 200th batch of beer brewed since they opened and they brewed a Belgian triple. So I got a 16 ounce can, $10 can, <laughs> <laughs> but the, it was a pretty strong, it was an 8.3% triple. And I'll tell you what, uh, the Belgian triple was really good. It was a little bit more sweet in the front end than I, you know, heavy in the, in the front end than I like in a triple, but um, it wasn't you know too sweet and it wasn't too wasn't alcoholic and it had all the it had a little bit of all what you expect in a belgian ale it had some bubble gum some clove and some banana but it, none of them were overpowering and it just was a really and it finished dry uh, so it was everything i enjoy in a good triple but the body was a little bit heavier than what i really like that's why i gave it a four cap rating um, if the body would have been a little bit lighter. And I think, I'm wondering if that's what Bill was saying with the maltiness of that triple that he had at Copper Tail. Maybe he was equating the, the heaviness that the beer might have with, with malt uh, character or, or, or sugars uh, that are in there. Um, I, I prefer triples that are, aren't heavy. I like, I like that lighter uh, and either lighter or more effervescent. Mm -hmm. So it feels lighter in your mouth, right? That's again, we're talking about mouthfeel from earlier, right? Yep. If you have effervescence, it feels lighter as you're drinking it. So th those are my new and noteworthy beers. Okay, Chris, it is time to end this show. We'll get done in about uh, less than an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe, you know, that'll be good. So, uh, but before we end the show, I always want to give you a chance to raise a glass to some people you'd like to raise a glass to. So who would you like to raise a glass to tonight? So I want to raise a glass to Robert Elliott, a local, local person here in the Tampa area. Actually, his mom actually lives in our neighborhood, um, but he was on the live stream with us. So Robert, thanks for hanging out with us on the live stream. He had to jump off of here almost uh, 15, 20 minutes ago, uh, <laughs> but thanks for hanging out with us. And I want to give out some happy birthday wishes to Tom Joseph uh, on the 17th was his birthday. And then upcoming here on the 24th, Mr. John Ream. Oh, happy birthday to you, sir. Happy birthday, John. Here, cheers to you, buddy. Yeah. Happy 29th. <laughs> yeah. I don't really know how old he is. <laughs> or whatever anniversary of your 29th birthday we're celebrating this year to you, sir. So cheers. Um, mm. And Denny, who might you like to raise a glass to this evening? 
Oh, wow. That, that's it, huh? That, I thought you had a whole list. Listen, uh, I got three people in there I talked about. <laughs> that's more than normal. Yeah, I know. You're uh, just lagging behind. <laughs> okay. So um, I did pour another beer. By, by the way, I'm. Uh, did I talk about the uh, Grand Tetons Cold IPA? You time? didn't. Yeah. So I've, I've been drinking a lot of these cold IPAs. Cold IPAs are like the new brute IPA, but the difference is but they don't they're suck. much better. They don't <laughs> suck. <laughs> That's the key. I, I really enjoy this cold IPA style and I've been drinking as much as I can get. And I've enjoyed, and honestly, I've liked, I think every single one I've had some more than others. This one is really danky, right? You, the cold IPA has an opportunity to provide some serious, like, dank to a beer. And mm -hmm. I'm not a big danky fan, but for some reason, this beer just, I, I, I just like, right? It just tastes good. I, I enjoy a little bit of dankness with my beer and a little bit of that, I don't know, that, that characteristic of a, of a, I mean, we, we talked about cold IPAs, the process, a while ago, like a half a year ago, right? We, we, mm -hmm. we had a segment on it when they first started releasing. And they, we talked about the difference between uh, India Pale Lager and a cold IPA. And the log, you know, the lager is, you know, it, it's, they're doing different processes to give you a similar, um, I guess, uh, taste, not, not only taste, but... Uh, uh, I don't know, to, to give you like a lager feeling with a IPA, like an IPA that's, that's a, a, I don't know, like a lager, but um, this one is good. I, I, I like all these cold IPAs and I prefer them way over the IPLs. IPLs don't have the body that these have. That's the main difference between a cold IPA and IPL is that these have a very nice body to them and the mouthfeel feels like you're drinking an IPA, but you're, but a lot of times, you know, it's, it's got like subtle qualities of a, of a lager in there as well. Um, but yeah, I'm drinking this one right now. So cheers to John and to Tom Joseph on their birthdays and a toast to Jeff Seiler. He's our Patreon toast of the week. Cheers, uh, thank Jeff. Thank you for your support. And I already mentioned him earlier that we met by chance at Mad Swede Brewing, but Jeremy Garrison, cheers to you. I raise my glass, and I hope we can get together and drink some beers and chat some more. I really appreciated our, our chat that we had uh, last weekend. And, of course, being a former serviceman, I want to raise my glass and thank all those who have served and are currently serving in the U.S. military services, protecting our freedoms. I hope those deployed are able to return home safely very soon. And, Chris, why don't you go ahead and raise a glass to our sponsor? Certainly. So you can go check out our sponsor, Frost Buddy. They specialize in cooling containers for your beverage of choice. Frost Buddy has the Universal Buddy 2.0, which is the world's first universal can cooler for 12 ounce cans, slim cans, bottles, and even 16 ounce cans. Frost Buddy also has the world's first universal wine cooler, 24 ounce stainless steel mugs, and even stainless steel dog bowls. You can go visit their website at frostbuddy.com. Okay, and you can find the beers and links to the articles mentioned in the show in the show notes located on the show post at tappedtocraft.com. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, I can be found on Twitter, Instagram, and untapped at Loose Screw. And Chris, how can our listeners follow you? So you can never find me on Twitter at Chris underscore McKenzie 82, or you can find me on untapped and Instagram at MCK1345. And Interact with us on everything social at Tap the Craft. All right. It is last call. It's time to bring the show to a close. We want to thank you for downloading and listening, and we ask you to please tell a friend. And, of course, subscribe on your favorite podcast app. And as a reminder, we release a new show every two weeks. Now go out there and spread the good word of craft beer. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>